Welcome everyone, this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing, and today I want to talk about thyroid hormone receptors. Thyroid hormone gets all the love, and thyroid gets all the love, but what about the receptors? But before we jump in, please like our video, please comment on our video, show us a little support, subscribe to our channel to show us a little bit more love, and hit that notification button wherever it is, so every week, on every Wednesday we put out a video, you get notified. Let's jump in. Thyroid hormone gets all the love. The thyroid gets all the love. No one is talking about the receptors. And this is one of the reasons, among others, why we created the RTN approach. Restoration thyroid nutrition approach. This is our method. This is what we've been doing for 22 years, working with clients all over the world with great success. Now, here's the thing. You have thyroid hormone receptors all over your body, your muscles, your kidneys, your liver, your retina, your hypothalamus, anterior pituitary, etc. In different forms. They're all over the body. And you have thyroid hormone flowing through your blood, right? And it goes to the liver, attached to a specific protein. The problem is the only way this thyroid hormone can actually do its job, job and become physiologically active is to be kind of, in a sense, activated by these receptor sites. Now, this is great in a perfect world. This should actually happen. But here's the kicker. If we have chronic stress, that turns into oxidative stress internally. And when it keeps going, that turns into inflammation and calcification. Along this paradigm, when we're living beyond our means, we're not eating enough to meet our needs. Remember, stress is when the demands being placed in the organism exceed what the organism can handle. That's a stress. That's why a lot of people say, I'm not stressed, but you are because you're overworking, you're overtraining, you're under eating, you're stressed because of what's going on in the world. You've had trauma, maybe you had a trauma in your teens or early on, or even in your 20s or 30s, and it's never been truly resolved. You said, okay, it's gone, I'm good, but it's still locked in your system. The problem is, this is that chronic oxidative stress that turns into inflammation and calcification. And with that, there's a lot of things that happen right? We lose copper, iron goes up, we produce a lot of cytokines, interleukins, we're producing pro-oxidation. We're not producing antioxidants anymore, which help us, right? We're producing pro-oxidants. This is like money going out of our bank account at a very fast rate, we're ending up with debt, or exhaust coming out of a car that's black and burning and or white. It's not good. We don't want to be in this place all the time. Yes, we should be able to handle stress, but we produce antioxidants to clean up all that oxidation. But when it's chronic, this becomes a problem. Why? Because those, that inflammation, the cytokines, interleukins, et cetera, will desensitize your receptor sites. It's kind of like insulin resistance, right? Thyroid hormone is, is, is being converted. It's in the blood and it's maybe going to the cell and it's knocking on the door, but the cell can't let it in because the receptor sites are desensitized, right? Just like insulin resistance. Now, <clears throat> what are some common patterns that we see? Well, the most four I would say is you're working with your doctor, right? And they have you on a medication and uh, they keep increasing the dose, but you're seeing no changes in your thyroid hormone labs, right? Why? Because this, the receptor sites are desensitized because of chronic inflammation. The environment is too chaotic. We have not changed the environment. We go to the doctor, I have hypothyroidism, okay, you know, here are your labs, take this medication. The problem is, as we've said a million times, you're tasting the effect. Nothing, the cause hasn't changed. There's still inflammation being produced. Thyroid hormone is not a magic pill. Number two, you have all these kind of like hypothyroid-like symptoms, right? But you don't have a thyroid issue in a sense. You don't have any type of, um, you know, hypothyroidism diagnosis. Um, so you, you, you have all these symptoms and no matter what you do or what supplements you take, nothing really works. Same thing. You haven't changed the course. You haven't changed the cause and there's still inflammation in the system. So it doesn't matter what thyroid supplement you take. doesn't matter what glandular you take, right? Nothing is going to work. It doesn't matter what diet you do, it's not going to change the physiology. It's not going to change the internal environment. The third is people with Hashimoto's, right? People with Hashimoto's, it's an immune system issue. It's not a thyroid issue. And people with Hashimoto's, that's end of the spectrum. This is kind of like homeostasis. This is Hashimoto's. It's chronic inflammation, chronic immune system suppression, and chronic mineral depletion, right? And the problem is 
you know, I can't really say this, but a lot of people with Hashimoto's truly don't need a medication. I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying go on and go off. I'm just saying my experience because it's not a thyroid issue, right? And when people are put on a medication with Hashimoto's, you can actually create a thyroid problem. But what happens is because of that inflammation, same thing as my first example, there's desensitization of the thyroid hormone receptors. So you might take thyroid medication, but you're not really seeing a change and you're not seeing a change in how you feel. Or you're seeing a change in your labs because you're taking thyroid hormone now, which is gonna create the illusion you're fixing something. You're gonna see a shift in your labs, but you still feel like crap. Again, you're chasing the effect, the cause, has not been changed. And lastly, it would be people self-diagnosing themselves and buying thyroid medication online, whether it be T4, T3, or T3 by itself, which is very popular, and taking it and taking it. The problem is what people don't understand is you could take, based on research, thyroid hormone for two to three weeks, T3, and actually slow down your thyroid and create a thyroid problem. Number, and kind of goes with this, is doctors that are over-prescribing thyroid medication thyroid medication. You create this thyroid resistance, right? Um, so you're not going to really see a change and it all comes back to what I keep saying. You're trying to change the effect, right? Yeah, you might see change in your labs, but you still feel like crap. Why? Because nothing's really working. It's not getting in the cell and the cells are not being activated. This is why your dose keeps going up. This is why your labs might not regulate. This is why your labs might regulate, but you still don't feel good no matter what you do, how much thyroid hormone you take, and the list goes on, right? Most people wanna know what to do. Of course, this isn't a treatment plan. This isn't a personalized treatment plan. The goal is to give you another school of thought and say, wow, I have Hashimoto's. Wow, I feel like crap on my medication. Wow, my labs are changing, but I still feel like crap. Or I do have Hashimoto's and I'm on medication, but nothing's really working. The point of our work in the videos is to give people a different school of thought, food for thought and say, hmm, maybe what I'm doing is not working. I don't wanna keep doing it and doing it for two years, three years, four years, because if it's not working, why do it? This is why we created the RTN approach. And of course, in the description, we have a free opt-in, the 10 tips with thyroid health. We do a free live every other Thursday, the thyroid reset, where you can just ask questions for free. And of course, we have kind of a tier of like, Entry starting point would be balancing the body budget to get the ball rolling. It's not an end all be all. And then we have our group coaching and then our one on one coaching, right? So there's that tier. So you do have options, whether it's free or paid. But here's the thing. And if you go back to really what I kept saying in this video, you have, you can't heal in the same environment you get sick. Of course, externally, but that's hard for a lot of people to change. That's hard for a lot of people to wrap their head around. But if we eat in a way, right? to meet our metabolic needs, we begin to shift the physiology. Now we're focusing on nourishing the cause. We're changing the physiology, right? So if we're taking a thyroid medication, if we're taking a glandular, or even if we're not, now we're gonna change the effect, right? Because we're focusing on meeting our needs, we're focusing on de-stressing the system, we're focusing on paying off our debt, and we're focusing on getting ourselves away from producing all these prooxidants, right? We're reducing stress, we're reducing oxidative stress, and we're producing more antioxidants. So what happens over time is we're changing our environment. It's like being $100,000 in debt, changing how you're spending, how you're living to get your you know, uh, money under management per se and start paying off your debt so you end up in the green over time. It's the same thing. Your body has a budget. You have to manage it the same way. And this is what the RTN approach is all about, right? So what happens now is now that you're making a change, the medication you're taking and the glandular you're taking are not, you're going to start to see major, major shifts, not only in your labs, but how you feel. So thanks for tuning in. Of course, if you get questions, if you get comments, if you want to share anything, put it in the comments below. As always, I always appreciate you for tuning in. I'm out.